All right, guys, so uh, over the last couple days, I've been slowly working on getting this engine all getting prepped and ready and putting things together, and um, this was going to be something I was going to talk about uh, as part of the engine build video, but, you know, it's been, it's I guess coincidentally, I just got recently got comments on the video, and, uh, and now I'm dealing with the situation of putting this engine together. I'm checking ring gaps right now, and... Um, so I thought I would. Oh, okay, I pull the damn thing out. I thought I would talk about it because uh, when I when I made the, the last video last time, Jesse did chime in, and I so I reread Jesse's comment and then of course rewatched my video to see exactly what I'm talking about because you know hundreds of videos I can't remember everything I say word for word, and just like I tell you guys to go back and watch again, I also rewatched to make sure that I'm. You know, uh, make sure what I was right, uh, what I said was right, that I don't need to update it too much, or, you know, just to get what I was saying done. So, uh, with with rewatching and listening to what I said, plus add with the added comments from Jesse and from what I've run into tonight, uh, then it does it does require a, 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 an update, a part two to this video. Um, now, not really taking too much away from what I said last time, because... You know, from what I was from when I was being DM before I, I made mention that somebody had a gap of 37, which is enormous. That is next level big. So no, if you get a gap that big, that's crazy. Uh, the biggest recommended gap I've ever seen for one of these turbo applications is like 27, you know, 0.0027, and that's still on the big side for me. I think I've never personally gone over 26, and I think I've maybe hit 26 before because my dumb ass gapped a little bit more than I should have. But uh, 24 is generally on the side that is still generally what I would say is big. Usually, what I would what I normally used to gap to before would be like top ring would be like 18 or 19, and then like 22 on the uh, on the secondary ring because, like I said, it's generally like two thousandths of an inch uh, is different. Um, between the top and uh, the first and second ring, right? So if you get point zero zero one eight on the first, and then you're gonna get like a point zero zero two zero on the on the second one there. That's that's common, right? So this is the main reason why I decided to talk about this tonight. That and like I said, Jesse's comment. I wanted to address that situation. So, um, listening to also going to re reviewing one of my other videos on ring gaps. Using the formula I've had before, I think is um, you know, ordered pistons, and sometimes, sometimes with the parts you buy, you'll get like uh, little charts and shit that'll give you like recommendations, right? And one of the pistons that I got at well, some point in time, maybe it was maybe a set of Vitara pistons or whatnot. I had a uh, got the um, a little red piece of paper. And for those of you guys that have been bought enough new pistons or what, you, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's a little red piece of paper and it's got the formula on it for your um, piston ring gap formula. Um, and now, in in the uh, in the formula that I was using on the last time I built with these pistons, I used a, a much bigger gap formula, right? It was, um, time, it was the bore size converted to inches times 0 .006, I think it was. Yeah, and so that was gave me the calculation of around I think it was point zero zero one nine, and then uh, you know I don't think I was I needed to gap the second ring. I think the second ring fell into place where it was supposed to be, or at least close to it, or whatnot. And in in, in the in the situation in the normal times, what I would do, like if the top ring whatever the top ring was, I would kind of gap I would gap the first ring out to that. All right, so uh, I would gap it out uh, accordingly to to match that. Um, a lot of times all right now I've never had any big issues with having blow by or whatnot and having a little bit of a looser ring I think it's kind of like what they're saying like like having a, a little bit of a looser bearing you, you want you'd rather have a little bit more play than to have too close because um well see I think a looser ring you're gonna you're gonna have uh, more blow by with a tighter ring you are you're running into failures like you're running into piston rings button into each other and your fucking ring lands failing that's that's what causes that you get gases trapped and won't be able to escape so you'll have a catastrophic failure as opposed to blow by now blow by is not good either because you're losing compression but there's ways there's other ways other things you can do to alleviate those stresses not going to get into that here because it's not important but anyway having it a couple thousands a little bit too big is better than a couple thousands too small a couple thousand too big you can work with that a couple thousand too small equals destruction of parts so yeah there's that all right so 
All right, so what I found tonight was uh, Wiseco's charts are different from what I've normally used before. Now, why did I decide to go and look at Wiseco this time around as compared to what I used before? Well, for two reasons. One, what I used before was generic, and I even mentioned it in my ring gapping thing. Like the 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 charts I used were generic. I think uh, it, even like it even for the YCP thing, it didn't seem like it was specific for that but whatever right so there's that this and and then uh there, and the second reason why i went with wise goes 4p like four piston right like, these guys have their collaboration with, with wise go and they do their shit with their pistons a lot so i figured you know let me take a look at their chart now wise goes chart is much tighter ring gap recommendations than uh well i wouldn't say much tighter but a tighter ring gap recommendation than what is called for from what i was using before so instead of point, you know, instead of board times point zero zero six, it was uh, their high performance is point zero zero four five. All right. So if you do the eighty one millimeter board converted over to inches, I do believe it is three point one eight eight nine eight. I do believe that it was is what it is. Now if you multiply that to the four five, you're looking at like point zero zero one four three and change, right? Now, when I dropped the fucking ring in, the first ring in, it came out, it's right around 14.5. It's, uh, now, I don't have a 14, you know, you know, 14 point, uh, a point zero zero one four five gauge, feeler gauge. It's uh, point zero zero one four, and then, of course, the next one up was 1.5, right? So, uh, 1.5 is a bit too big, 1.4 is a bit too small, so it, common fucking sense says it's somewhere right in the middle, so 0.45. Now, the measurement come out for a high-performance street. Now, there's moderate and there's high performance, and I'm saying this is high performance because the engine, I think, naturally makes, like, what, you know, 150 horsepower, 140 horsepower, and we're expecting 500. So, we're talking about several times multiplied here. So, I'm going to say this is a high performance engine build. High performance engine build, the Weissco Ring Gap is calling for a 14.3, you know, was 0.00143, and I'm measuring out at 0.00145. So, the fucking ring for this 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 top ring is spot the fuck on is spot on this ring is it, it gapped out perfect so this also says that this engine block is fucking healthy as shit now i will say that i've only done the first fucking uh, the first cylinder so far because i, I made me stop you know i gotta tell you guys man you just you just so much reading involved there's so much re going over things that you've already gone before and adding new things to it and i've spent an hour and a half easily tonight just rehashing information that I've, you know, stuff that I've done a, a whole bunch of times, but, you know, running into this new chart, you know, tighter ring gaps, and then it made me start thinking about what, you know, Jesse said, so I went back to read what he said, and uh, another thing that he mentioned was, like, you know, one thing that I mentioned in the video was that, you know, the reason why I was thinking that we were having an issue here with rings is that the top rings were coming out right where you would expect them to, like, now, even though normally I was gapping these a little bigger than the 14, up to a 19 um it's still i was still expected to land there because that's right that's on the high end of what oem is now high, oem is like point uh zero zero eight or point zero it's, it's anyway it's eight to 14 right right in that range 14 being the high side so this is calling for a 14 then that's fine Right, and these are cast pistons. Now, yes, they're different than the OEM cast, but they're still cast, and they're not going to expand as much as aluminum. So, I think that using that that ring gap, but based on what Weisco says and based on what these pistons are, sounds fucking reasonable as shit. Like that sounds perfect. Like so, fourteen five, and it makes me happy as fuck because that means I ain't got a gap. Now, that's that's great. That that saves so much fucking time. All right. Um, but anyway, I don't want to make it sound like I'm coming off being lazy. This is something I've checked and double-checked again. And based off Wiseco's charts, this is where it is. Now, I know that different piston manufacturers have their different recommendations. But uh, I'm just, like I said, for this for this particular setup, we're going to go, we're going to trust in Wiseco here. Now, what the, the, the comment that Jesse left, uh, the reason why it's super important is because it's very specific to the, this ring in general, right? Now... I was saying that the first ring was coming out perfect. People were having issues with the secondary ring. Now, when I mentioned earlier that somebody said they had like a point zero zero three seven gap, it was a secondary ring. That secondary ring had that problem, right? Three seven is enormous. 
um, two seven is kind of big. Now, when you've done a whole bunch of these, when you've got the whole bunch of rings, you've done a bunch of engine builds, you'll start to recognize, you know, gap sizes. These gaps are tiny. Like when you talk about real space, they're the amount of space that these are open. Once you put them in the board, it's not very big. But you'll your eye will be trained after you've done and seen so many a bunch of times. Now I put the first one in, and I was like right away because oh that's tight, that's a tight ring, right? Put the second one in, and I'm like right away that ring is on the big side. I'm like oof, this is loose. That looks pretty big. That, that gap looks like shit. My bad. That gap looks pretty big. Now I was like well this one, you know yeah, you're not gonna know where it's at until you stick the goddamn gauge in. It. I hope we don't have a fucking problem here, right? So uh, I put the gauge in, and it's right around 24, you know, 0 .0024. I'm like, okay, okay, you know, that's a little big, and, and the discrepancy between the top and the, first, and the second ring is much bigger than I would normally set, but it is still within a limit that I would say is reasonable, All right? So I know that I'm bouncing around. I've said this probably like three times. I'm going to say it one more time. So going back to what Jesse said again, he said he was explaining the difference, the differentiations, uh, differentiations between the gaps, the rings, right? You notice the uh, notice the rings here, right? Yeah, the color of that ring. You know the dark material here, the dark material here. And then now look at the first ring. All right, oh, shit. And look at the secondary ring, right? Clearly, clearly made with different material, right? All right, see this perfect. Now you catch the light. You can see a different material, right? Now, what Jesse said was that the secondary ring is made of a different material uh, called ferox, right? So, this ring has a different expansion rate than this ring, which is the reason why these come with a much larger gap than the first rings, all right? So, with this being a 24, it's not a crazy thing that is much bigger gap than this. And on top of that, you know, the still the still the twenty four is within reason of what I would be comfortable building an engine with. So, um, so right now, as far as cylinder number one is concerned, we are not gapping rings. Uh, the twenty four for the secondary ring, it it fits where I would you know put the top end for boost, and also with the explanation of, from Jesse about the material of that particular ring growing faster. Then, then I would say yes, that that matches also the concerns that and that could possibly come up from that, and the the first ring matches what Wiseco says, and um, and I even remember talking to Jesse about these particular ring sets at Honda Day recently, and um, these uh, these rings can even be used with forged pistons. As a matter of fact, I think uh, the next time I get a set of these, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check them out with this with the set of CPs that I have. If, if my fucking pistons weren't buried under the goddamn pile of shit, I would dig them out right now. Because um, when I was talking to Jesse about rings, I was saying that, um, like, I've gotten away with... Hmm, I had an incident one time where I broke a fucking ring while I was building a friend's engine. It was a friend, so I knew I could get away with this. If, if there was an issue, I could always go back and it wouldn't be a big deal. I was doing it for free. Right, uh, I broke a fucking secondary ring. Now, if you've bought CP piston rings or Wiseco rings, you gotta buy them individually like this per piston. And when you buy all of them, they're twenty five dollars for each one. So you're looking at a hundred dollars for rings, right? So that sucked. Now, apparently, you can get these Nippon uh, these these rings, uh, these specific rings from their uh, from Nippon Racing's website. And uh, I I have to go back and check uh, check the prices. I'm not I don't know for sure, but I would imagine that they're much cheaper because of the fact that these come with the turbo pistons and the turbo pistons are only like two hundred some dollars. So I would imagine if you're buying just the rings alone, it's sub substantially cheaper, right? So the, apparently these these rings are uh, also agreeable with your forged pistons or whatnot. So anyway, yeah, I know so I got a little sidetracked there because I thought it was a little fun note for anybody that's building on a regular basis. I, I still, I guess I'll follow up with this eventually on Instagram when I go and do that. But, um, wow, okay, so 14 and a half minutes talking here. The original video was uh, that I made on this sub subject was like seven minutes. But um, there was more to add to the story this time around. And I guess we're going to just, you know, I wanted to explain that and uh, just clarify some stuff there. So yeah, if you're if you're looking at a ring gap, if you're looking at a ring gap that comes out over 27, I would still show some concern, and I and I would feel very hesitant to use that. Um, but um, 
if you're looking at like a, you're looking in the, in the mid 20 range, the point zero zero two five two six two seven. I think you're still safe to go ahead and run them. Um, you start seeing two eight two nine three zero. You might want to do some double checking and and uh, make sure that your piston ring is one hundred percent square, or whatnot. Um, yeah, so that's all. That's all I got to say about that. You know, to add to this, and uh, peace. Good night. I want to finish measuring out these rings, and hopefully, I can just ring these pistons and drop them in in the morning. Peace.